morning, folks. It's, uh, it's that time of year again, and I'm about to embark on one of my favorite activities of the year, and that is to be out looking for and shooting grouse. And the next couple days, uh, I'll be looking for ruffed grouse in particular, and hope to share with you all uh, the process of uh, shooting ruffed grouse on their drumming logs, uh, the males displaying. Um, it's uh, it's mid-April, and I'm in Okanagan County in north central Washington state, and I'm in an area of really nice uh, grouse habitat potentially in this uh, this aspen grove uh, beside a beaver pond. Throughout much of the west, coniferous forests dominate the landscape, but along riparian areas, you get these nice strips of aspen other deciduous trees that are really the favorite habitat of rough grouse in this part of the world. Um, in a lot of northern parts of their range and western parts of the range, uh, aspens are the most important plant, basically, for grouse, for feeding on. And they also grow in you know these wetter riparian areas uh, where there's a lot more plant diversity, a lot more herbaceous plant cover, and a lot of thicket and undergrowth and saplings and rough grouse like pretty dense habitat out here and most places where they occur. And hopefully we'll find some grouse out here and I'll walk through the steps actually over a couple of days of first locating grouse, then getting set up for the grouse, and then uh, hopefully shooting the grouse's behavior at their drumming log. So uh, let's head along here and see what we find and talk a little bit more about grouse and how we'll do all this stuff. So the key to finding rough grouse uh, drumming is uh, really to be in the right habitat, right time of day, and uh, the right time of year. Drumming really uh, gets going in earnest uh, in March and really peaks in April and will go on into May. Um, and that's kind of the, the main thrust of uh, the courtship and mating season for grouse. Uh, rough grouse will drum throughout the year. They actually drum quite a bit in fall as well. Um, but this is the time of year when females are coming, mating, and then going off to lay their eggs. And so this is the time of year that the males will be displaying uh, most vigorously, regularly. Um, as far as time of day goes, uh, drumming really peaks around sunrise. Um, a little bit before sunrise to, uh, till mid-morning. Um, and they'll return to their drumming perch periodically throughout the day and drum as well. But they really drum at their highest rate um, and really stick to their perch, um, mostly in the morning. Um, and then there'll be another uh, bout of, of sustained drumming often uh, around sunset and just before sunset. So really this is the best time to locate drumming logs and, and find the grouse. Um, oh, first grouse. Um, there's a uh, there's a grouse up here a little ways, so that'll be our first our first guy hopefully. Okay, well let's move on. Let's go see if we can find this guy. So it's probably not possible to hear from here with that really low frequency drumming, but there's a grouse drumming right on the other side of this this little uh, wetland strip. And as is usually the case, it looks like it's in a, a pretty dense thicket. Um, I'm not gonna get really close to the, the drumming grouse right now. Um, what I wanna do this morning is walk a really uh, big area of habitat here and try to locate the general area where a number of different grouse are drumming. Um, hopefully we'll have a number of males in this area. And what I'll do is kind of pinpoint the general area by getting, you know, 40, 50 yards away from where I think the grouse is drumming. Uh, remember that spot. And then come back uh, later in the morning when the grouse have stopped drumming, they've kind of started wandering off to feed and whatnot. And then I'll go in and look for their, their actual drumming log by looking for their droppings. Um, that way it won't disturb the grouse while they're displaying. Um, and I can get a, a nice feel for the spot and whether it's suitable for, for shooting um, without worrying about disturbing the grouse. Um, here it goes again. 
So I've kind of got a visual marker uh, on where I think this, this grouse is roughly uh, displaying. Um, one way to really kind of pinpoint where they are is to, to cup your ears. And as soon as you start to hear drumming, you kind of pinpoint the direction, focus on that, walk a little bit closer, wait for it to drum again. Again, pinpoint it by, by cupping your ears. Um, and then you'll be close enough to have a, a pretty good idea of right about where its log is without actually uh, getting close enough to, to disturb the grouse. So that's grouse number one. I'll keep moving on and we'll see if we can find another one. Snowshoe hair. So again, I don't know if it's possible to hear that, but uh, I've got another uh, grouse drumming right across this little wetland right here. Um, and as I was listening to him drum, there's actually a third one. It sounds like it's up about another uh, 75 yards or so. So I've got a nice visual marker here. There's a nice tall, uh, uh, Ponderosa pine, little guy right there. Um, I'm gonna use that. The, the grouse is right down under there somewhere. So that's my second grouse, and I'm gonna go try to find uh, this third one up a little bit farther. So I've done my search around this, uh, this big beaver pond here, searched what I think is the good habitat uh, around the margins of this, this wetland area, and uh, only found one more German grouse. Um, I suspect there's more here, but uh, I think it's getting late in the morning and most of them stopped drumming. So um, I'm sitting pretty close to the one that I found and he hasn't drummed in about 20 minutes. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable now that the, the, the grouse have stopped drumming for a while. They're wandering around foraging, so it's a good time to go and see if I can find the actual drumming log. Um, so we found uh, four grouse now drumming this morning, and I'll go back and evaluate each of the spots, hopefully find their log, and then evaluate it to see is this a good place to shoot, and hopefully one of them will be. So I'm going to go down into this thicket here and see if we can uh, find this drumming log. So uh, like I was saying, they really like the thick stuff and uh, this is the general area I heard the uh, drumming coming from and it's there's a, basically a jumble of logs in here in a thicket so it's probably not going to be a great place to shoot but let's uh, see if we can find his actual drumming spot. really dense in here but there's this nice big log right here let's see oh there's some droppings let's see there it is ha. <laughs> so there's this pile of droppings one of the cool things is all of the droppings are on one side of the log so that's one way you can tell which way the bird primarily faces when it's strumming. Um, oftentimes they'll, they'll be facing towards their, their nearest rival male. Um, sometimes if there's multiple males, uh, a guy may drum frequently in both directions and you might see droppings on both sides of the log. Um, but this guy, he's, uh, he's got all his droppings basically on one side, so he pretty much just sits here facing towards the, uh, the east um, every morning and uh, drums away. Cool to find and uh, not a great one to shoot, but uh, we'll go check the other ones and see how those look. So I'm back to my original spot that I first started at this morning.
Just looking at this log, there's a there's a few droppings here, but not a lot. And often these grouse will have, you know, a main drumming log, and then they'll have a few kind of peripheral spots where they'll occasionally drum from. I suspect that this is a not a heavily used spot, but hopefully that means we're close to something better. So this area is really dense. I found this initial log with a fair amount, amount of droppings and then a couple other logs with droppings. So this guy may bounce around between several spots, but uh, I'm not gonna search anymore for a, uh, a log in here. It's just super dense. So if I can get out of here, I'm going to keep looking for the perfect log. Bird is safe from both photographers and predators drumming in there. No goshawk's gonna get him. I'm about to go down to the next spot here. Looks a little more open. <laughs> we'll see. So I'm into a new area. It's a little more open here. Um, more aspens and quite a few good logs here. So I'm just gonna search these logs. few droppings but not a drumming oh there we go right here this nice log there's a nice pile so this log right here is primo if he uh, if he's a regular here it's nicely elevated and uh, the backgrounds in both directions are quite distant without a lot of uh, busy uh, branches and stuff. Um, just looking at the droppings, it looks like he's facing um, more westerly from this spot. So um, he'd be backlit in the morning if there was some sunshine. Uh, but afternoon, if he's here in the afternoon, evening towards sunset, which he likely will be, this could be really nice. Um, the canopy here is fairly open. There's not a lot of conifers in here and it should be quite bright even if it's cloudy, um, which will be great. So this is definitely my log. I'm not going to go look for that third one. Um, this is perfect. And I'm going to head back to my car, maybe eat a little lunch and uh, grab my blind and my telephoto and come out here and set this thing up for shooting. So, we'll see you in a bit. So, now that I've got a log, great spot it looks like. Um, I've sat here eating my lunch, kind of pondering how I want to go about shooting it. And, you know, after all the effort it takes to, to get to a location, um, to, to find your, your subject, um, you really want to think through how you're going to shoot it. So, um, the first thing I did was check the weather. and. As sunny as it is today, um, we're going to have clouds and potentially some snow the next two or three days. So with that in mind and seeing that the bird looks like it's facing towards the west, I am not going to worry about uh, uh, which way the sun is rising and setting. Um, I'm going to set up so that I'm facing the bird um, the way he's facing. I'm going to try in the afternoon first, which uh, today at least would be a uh, uh, better if there is some sunlight. But if we do get some snow and there's good uh, brightness and light bouncing off the snow, it won't really matter which way I'm shooting it. So um, depending on how this works out, I will try to shoot it, you know, uh, from behind and from the front and probably from each side. But I want to start off uh, um, really getting that front uh, viewpoint and see how that looks because I, I think that that uh, that vantage point looking towards the east from the west really had the nicest backgrounds also. So that's a, another thing I'm considering. Um, the next thing in my process here will basically be to take my telephoto lens. I'm gonna shoot with a 600 millimeter lens um, on a video tripod. I'm gonna use a tragopan blind with a cocoless chair. Um, and what I'm gonna do first is take my telephoto, my 600 
on its tripod and go and find the exact angle that I want without setting up a blind or anything like that. Um, I want the height to be just right. I want the right back background. Um, this is the kind of thing where uh, comfort comes last. You may end up really low if the background's better, um, but you gotta get just that perfect background. You wanna get your distance right too for the, uh, the focal length that you're gonna use. Um, I wanna use my 600 millimeter lens, be as far away as I can. Um, and I want to kind of imagine the size of a ruffed grouse with its wings spread like it's drumming and then get a little looser than that with a 600 millimeter lens. Um, I'm also going to take into account that I'm shooting video, so I'll be using a 16 by 9 frame. So I'll probably back off even a little bit more with the 600 to make sure I have a nice loose frame um, on outstretched wings. Um, with that, I'll then have the option to throw my 1.4 teleconverter to get a little closer. Um, but I'll uh, kind of visualize it um, when I'm checking it out, setting it up, imagining the size of the grouse on the log, and trying to get my distance right as well. So um, I'll get that set up, and get my chair set up, and then I'll grab the, uh, the, uh, the Tragopan blind and basically pop it open. It's a good blind for this because it's so tight in there, I can just pull the drawstring, pop the thing open, and throw it over top of the, uh, the uh, tripod and camera that's all set up right in the way I want it to be set up. It's a tight spot, but it should do the trick here. I think I'm at a, a, a real nice range for the log. And uh, it's about three o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. So assuming this guy will come back in the evening, I'm gonna get in now and I'm going to just wait it out. It'll probably be a while before he comes, but uh, hopefully he will come and uh, we'll get to see this guy tonight. So I haven't mentioned anything about what exactly it is that I'm shooting here for those of you that don't know. Um, ruffed grouse have a breeding uh, territorial mate attraction uh, display called drumming where the males have individual territories in the forest um, and they defend their territories year-round but in the spring they are especially uh, uh, active in advertising their presence to females and also maintaining their their territorial boundaries against neighboring males and it's a, it's a non-vocal sound, it's a mechanical sound, it's made by the wings and what the male does is he has a favored perch on a log on the forest floor usually and uh, he gets up there every morning and he uh, does this rapid succession of uh, accelerating wing beats where he quickly flips his wing from forward to backwards and this creates this temporary vacuum and actually creates a, a very small sonic boom. So it's this series of very low um, accelerating thumps um, made by this wing snap. And um, they don't do it uh, in rapid succession. Usually, you know, it could be a minute, two minutes, three minutes between these bouts of drumming. Um, but they'll stay at it for quite a long time, um, especially this time of year. So that's the, uh, the behavior that I'm here to film and to, to photograph. Well, it's been about three hours and I haven't seen him. Um, it's gotten really cold and actually some flurries and quite a bit of wind. So I think I'm gonna pack it in today and uh, dress up a little warmer for the morning and be out here before sunrise and hopefully uh, get this guy then. Um, I don't know if the, the, the wind and the weather has kind of kept him down or if uh, he's just not displaying in the afternoon, this guy. But I'm pretty certain he'll be here in the morning and uh, I'm gonna go get some food and a good night's sleep and I will see you in the morning.
Well, you've got some snow. <laughs> Heading into the blind. The grouse isn't here right now. Um, wasn't here when I walked in. But I can see a little mark on his log right in this drumming spot where the snow has been brushed away. So he's definitely been up on the log, moving around a bit since it's been snowing. Uh, so I'm gonna jump in the blind and hope it won't be too long before he comes and displays. All of the work pays off the moment you're sitting at dawn with a grouse in the forest. The forest is coming alive. The hooting of owls gives way to the drumming of sapsuckers and the first songs of forest birds. The red squirrels start getting busy. wonderful to have this intimate view of nature undisturbed. Despite all my planning, the human world did come calling and I had to cut my trip short. But not before I had one afternoon of lovely light on this bird. Photographing a drumming log, a single spot in the forest, the light is always changing, and the key is to be there through it all, so you're there when it's at its best. You're not only at the mercy of the changing sunlight and clouds, but also the constantly changing and moving shadows from the forest. For most of the afternoon, the sun was too strong and created too much contrast for pleasing images and too many shadows to contend with. My first decent opportunities came with a bright overhead cloud cover, though that left things kind of flat. I also did some shooting in very low light after the sun had dipped behind the mountains. But my best results came during a good 30 minute window of light when the sun was at its lowest in the evening and produced a more gentle palette of spotlights and warm reflected light. It was an ephemeral moment, but this was the best light by far. The good thing with a shooting situation like this is that the subject is static and the behavior repeats over and over. So there's plenty of opportunity for experimenting with camera settings. In most cases in the forest, High ISOs and open apertures will be the norm when trying to shoot high shutter speeds to freeze most of the drumming action. I drop my ISO to shoot the drumming at slower shutter speeds, leaving different parts of the bird blurred and capturing the feeling of motion. This is the time to take a ton of images at different shutter speeds and to see what effects you like. I drop my ISO even further when I wanted to shoot static portraits of the grouse when it was still and shutter speed didn't matter. Thanks for coming along on this little adventure. I'll leave you with one last look at this beautiful drumming grouse, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, and please be sure to subscribe for more.